Hi, my name is Matt with We're in the Rockies. My wife Cheryl is behind the camera here. I am standing at Glacier National Park. Look at this beautiful view. I am on the Going to the Sun Road, and in this video, I'm going to give you 10 things you need to know if you're going to drive the Going to the Sun Road at Glacier National Park. Okay, so the first thing to know is that it is 50 miles long, and it extends from West Glacier, there's actually like a West Glacier village, over the mountains into St. Mary's, which is on the East Glacier Park side, East, east side of Glacier National Park. So it's 50 miles long. So it takes about two hours to drive the entire road from West Glacier to East Glacier, and then another two hours coming back. Uh, the speed limit is pretty low as you're driving on the road because there are a lot of turns, some hairpin turns, and then of course you're driving along the ledge. There's even waterfalls that cross the road. Okay, the next thing to know is that not all vehicles are allowed on the road. So if you have a longer vehicle, you're not going to be able to go on it, like an RV or something like that. So let me make sure I have the measurements right here. If your vehicle is longer than 21 feet, including if you're pulling a trailer, you can't go on the Going to the Sun Road. If it's wider than 8 feet, you can't go on the road. And that's because the road is very tight and really hugs the wall, the rock walls at certain points, which kind of jut out a little bit. And so they don't want you smashing into the wall. And then uh, vehicles over 10 feet high, also not recommended is what it says. It says it's not recommended. And that's because you actually do drive under a ledge at one point. So I'm not sure why they haven't just said no vehicles under 10 feet or over 10 feet. They just say it's not recommended. Okay, the next thing to know is that it is a road that people ride their bikes on, but there are certain times when you cannot ride your bike. So I believe June 15th to Labor Day, certain sections of the road are closed off to bikes. So if you're interested in biking, I mean, good for you. Wow, this would not be a road I would ever want to bike. But if you're interested in biking, make sure you check the website for the times that you can ride your bike on it. Okay, the next thing to know is that there are actually different ways that you can travel along the Going to the Sun Road. So, of course, you can drive your own vehicle as long as it's short enough. And for that, the road is actually open 24 hours a day, although you would, I would never want to drive it at night. Uh, currently, they're doing some construction, so it's closed from like 10 at night to 6 in the morning. But there are other ways to travel along the road. So one of the very popular things, and it has been popular for about 100 years now, is to take a red bus tour. These really cool old 1930s style red buses are something that you can purchase. You can purchase a tour, and they offer four different types of rides. One that, you know, depending on the length. So some will go up to the top of the pass and then back down. Some will go all the way over the pass to the other side of St. Mary's. Some will go all the way over to Many Glacier, which is another section of the park. So there's different options that you can do with these tours. But one of the cool things about the tours is uh, they are open top. So you're riding around in this open top bus with just beautiful scenery, which would really be an amazing way to do this because you are going to want to be looking up because you're seeing these massive canyon walls. We did not do one of the Red Bus tours on this trip, and I'm super, I have super regret. <laughs> I have FOMO, I guess. I really wish we would have done a Red Bus tour. It looks amazing. And of course, you get a tour guide to tell you all about the stories of the park and all that. So that would be really cool. Now, but there is another way that you don't have to spend money to go on this tour, and you don't have to drive yourself. And that is that you can take the park shuttle. There is a free Glacier National Park shuttle. You can catch it down at many different stops, but in West Glacier and at Lake McDonald, and it'll take you up here, have, again, many shuttle stops along the way. You can stop and hike and catch the shuttle again when you're done. The shuttle runs every 10 to 15 minutes and would be a great way to do it if you're kind of scared to drive along this going to the Sun Road, or if you just want to enjoy the view while you're driving. Okay, there is another tour option as well. So if you're staying on the east side of the park, that is where the Blackfeet Indian Reservation is. And they actually run their own tours of the Going to the Sun Road. It is called Glacier Sun Tours. And these tours are half a day to a full day. So that's another option if you can't get the Red Bus Tours, which do book up early. Next, the Going to the Sun Road has limited availability. In fact, Glacier's entire travel season is short but the Going to the Sun Road is even shorter. Glacier is a cold mountain park. 
which means the snow takes a long time to melt. In fact, a lot of years, the snow doesn't melt on the going to the sun road to where you can drive on it until early July or late June. And then it can snow as early as September. Usually the season goes, I'd say July through the beginning of October, but you never know in September when the first snow is gonna hit and they close this road down. Okay, the next thing to know is there's very limited availability of amenities while you're driving on this road. I've seen a bathroom pull out. I've seen lots of pull outs along the way, but there's no water stations. There's no service stations. In fact, there's no gas stations in Glacier National Park. Me and Matt are kind of trying to think about our next strategy of when we're filling up our car. But yeah, no gas stations along the way. There are restaurants like at the bottom and at the bottom and up at Logan Pass, I believe, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the most part. Wait, you say restaurants? Yeah. Logan Pass does not have a restaurant. Okay. They just have a gift shop or visitor center. As Matt mentioned earlier, this is a two hour venture if you're going from West Glacier to East Glacier. And all the services are pretty much in West Glacier or East Glacier. There's not a lot of things along the way. At the top at Logan Pass, there is a gift shop, but some things there are to do on the going to the Sun Road. And this is a very long road. It goes all the way to Apgar Village. So along the way, there are hikes, there are restaurants, there's gift shops, there's lodging, all sorts of things like that on both sides. It's just not while you're on the main driving up and over the mountain. The next thing to know is that you may want to do this drive twice. And that's what we're doing on our trip because this is, I would say the number one thing to do in Glacier is this road. Everyone, this is what they mentioned, is the going to the Sun Road, did you drive it? And it really is quite an experience, but sometimes you're using this road for sightseeing, like you're, this is the experience, this is what you're trying to do. And other times you're trying to get somewhere and a lot of the parking lots in Glacier do fill up early and it may not, you may not wanna be having your trip on going to the Sun Road be en route to somewhere else because you're gonna to want to enjoy this. The next thing you need to know about driving the going to the Sun Road is to check the road conditions before you leave. When you are up at this high elevation in the mountains, the weather conditions can change quickly. Even while we've been shooting this video, we've had a couple of big gusty wind spurts come along. Storms move in and out quickly. And we're in Montana. It can snow anytime. So you wanna be making sure that you know the conditions that day. Finally, some bonus tips to help you drive like a pro. First, you're going, you're going to want to switch to a lower gear as you go down those steep hills. The Red Bus Tour operators were called jammers because they were known for shifting the, the Red Buses into really low gear as they go down the hill. So do the same, go in a low gear and that way you're not burning up your brakes. Next, I know it's gonna be tempting to drive in the middle of the road, but don't do it. You're gonna look like a complete noob and other people need the side of the road. The next thing is, is if you are super scared and you wanna drive slow, that's okay. Just pull over and let people pass you. It's not a big deal. I think about when we hike Angel's Landing at Zion, it's not a big deal if you get scared in the chain section and need to take, your, take a breath. It's okay. Just pull over and let other people pass you. And lastly, if you are driving an RV and use extension mirrors, make sure to take those off before you go. You would not believe how close you are to those canyon walls as you're driving. Okay, the next thing to know is that at least as of 2022, you need a reservation to drive the going to the sun road. So the parks are dealing with this kind of overcrowding type of a situation. And so a lot of parks are moving to these timed entry systems or just reservation systems. The way Glacier National Parks works this year at least is that you simply just need to get online on recreation.gov and reserve a ticket. I think it might cost two bucks or something like that. And the ticket or the reservation is good for three days of entering the going to the sun road. So if you, if you try to enter the park and you don't have that reservation, they're not going to let you in at least during the hours. And I believe the hours are 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. But I could be wrong on that. Just 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Cheryl says. So just check the website. Again, these things are kind of always changing. So the point here is to just make sure you're checking on the reservation. At least when I did it, they had an early window that you could get the reservation. And then I think they might have had kind of a closer window that you could try to get that reservation. But this is all kind of an experimental thing with the parks. They're really just trying out these ways of controlling the crowds. So these things could change, but be aware of that and double check it. 
Okay, the next the next thing to know is that it is pretty scary to drive the road. Well, if you're kind of afraid of heights, it can be pretty scary to drive the road. You are going to be driving along a sheer cliff ledge. Now, Cheryl and I drove the Beartooth Highway last year. This enters Yellowstone National Park from Montana, and that was intense. That was an intense drive with some steep, steep switchbacks. This is really intense as well. What's really kind of interesting about this road is once you make the turn at a little place called the Loop, then you just go on this extended forever straight drive up the mountain to the top of the pass. That's why they call it going to the sun because it feels like you're just driving into the sky. Um, and, and it is. It's sheer and it's it can be pretty scary, honestly. So be prepared for that if you if you don't like heights. The next thing is that plowing the road, plowing the going to the sun road is just a monumental task every single year. And so the snow plows will take months to plow this, this road, to get all the snow off of this road and get it prepared for traffic, months. And in fact, the opening date of the road changes every year simply based on the weather and the amount of snow. This year, in 2022, they had one of their latest openings ever. It wasn't until uh, the middle of June, I think, that they opened it. And so um, the opening time changes, it's scary. There's the, the snow plowing operation is just a Herculean feat. So have a little bit of appreciation for those guys who uh, who drive this scary road in the winter and plow this thing so that we can drive it free of snow. Okay, if you're visiting Glacier National Park, we have many resources to help you out. We have a playlist of YouTube videos where we talk about where to eat and where to stay and the things to do in Glacier National Park. Our website is we'reintherockies.com articles on there for you as well as a step-by-step -step itinerary to help you get the most out of your visit to Glacier. I also make an audio guide for the park so that you can learn about the park as you're driving through it. Check that out on our website, we're in the Rockies.com. Thank you for watching. Until next time, go west, young traveler.